obviously when the shilling weakens, then uh, imported items also become expensive. And uh, that does uh, <coughs> give us a challenge on, uh, on the inflation front. But having said that, uh, indeed, uh, as we have indicated, the uh, inflation now is within our range. It's now at 7.3, uh, despite the, um, the depreciation that we have experienced with the, with the shilling. Uh, and so, yes, but uh, it, it does not mean that we cannot address um, the inflation issue as we indeed uh, we have and uh, have now been able to at least bring the inflation rates to within um, the, our operating um, uh, range. I think going forward, um, we, we do expect, uh, as I said, uh, the current account is, um, is improving. The balance of payments uh, will be in surplus. Uh, all right, that is the Central Bank of Kenya Governor, Dr. Kamal Fuge, explaining what is happening to inflation, but also the reality that the depreciating cash shilling is also likely to push the inflation up. Dr. Makali Mulu, when you look at uh, the policies being implemented, it's been one year since the last election. It will be one year soon mm. uh, since the President William Ruto took the reins of power. But do you think uh, the inflation spikes and now the dropping that we are seeing, is it a product of government action? Or it's just ma the market sorting itself out, knowing that really the prices of energy, if you talk about electricity and fuel, have actually been going up? Hmm. Maybe before I comment on the inflation, allow me just to say something about the government to government uh, arrangement right. in terms of. Uh, uh, petroleum products. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember some in one of the shows where we had the senator, former Senator Madera, mm, Bill Okero. Bill uh, you remember at that point, he did raise two critical issues uh, touching on this agreement. And what has happened now is these things are coming up and actually is what Dr. Rugo has also confirmed. At that point, I remember what he said was that uh, this arrangement First of all, there were lots of uh, 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 things which are not coming out clear. It was not been explained to Kenyans what Kenyans will benefit out of this deal. Mm -hmm. If it's a matter of saving uh, the foreign exchange, how well, much we are saving. If it's a matter of uh, uh, Kenyans getting the price of fuel, to what extent that will be affected by this deal. And the last, which was very important to me, mm -hmm. He said, as a player in that, in that sector, there was minimal public participation. And in conclusion, we did say that one of the disadvantages of this government-to-government -government, uh, arrangement is the op opaqueness in terms of the way things have been done. Mm. It, it's not a transparent process right. where people will get to know uh, what is happening, and then you can compare that with what is happening outside the market, because there is the competitive bit where the markets are competing, and there is the government arrangement is just government to government, and at times, what they get into is, is not public. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what he has confirmed. Like, at the point of negotiations, mm -hmm. even the, the international price of petroleum products in terms of barbario was higher than the current. And then we already tied to that, because we actually locked that, that, that space. We are already paying higher when the market is already low. Mm. But that's a, a bit for another day. Now coming to inflation. Don't, don't move away first. Uh, yes. I'm just wondering, was Parliament made aware of this government? No, you remember, we, we did yeah. say, I did say that time I was here, and from a parliamentary perspective, I said, even us as Parliament, we are not involved. We didn't, we didn't give, you know, as Parliament, that should have come to Parliament, either to the Finance Committee for, for discussion or the Energy Committee, so that we get to know. Now, what will happen? Mm -hmm. you, you now see a parliamentary committee summoning these guys for explanation. But what, what explanation will you be getting when things have already gone haywire? To me, I think really, that's what we were saying. If they went the open <coughs> way, and I, that's why I agreed with the center at that time, that if we went the open way so that this deal, everything was on the table, we could uh, compare it with what is happening outside the market. But you know, because it's government to government, you don't open it for any scrutiny. Actually, I, I remember I did use the words, such arrangements, the worst bit which you go, don't get is accountability issues are already taken to the back seat. But, but, but one, the explanation was that it was going to give the country an opportunity to accumulate the forex. Yeah, because, because we are paying in also in, in shillings, not in dollars, you remember? <laughs> that was the arrangement. <laughs> are we? 
Rugo will confirm. <laughs> That's why the dollar is, is going at 144. If, if we had saved those dollars, which we were expecting to save, would be sick. You remember at that point, the president of this country did mention that the dollar will actually be coming downwards to 120. 115. If you yes. remember, 120 shillings per dollar. Mm. Where are we now? We are at 144. And, and that's what I'm saying to me. This government needs to come out and be more open. You know, open governance demands that whatever you do, you, you are able to discuss with them. Because we, they are the governors, but the Kenyans are the citizens who are being governed. And the citizens have a right to information so that they know how their government is governing them. Uh, but, but you see, when you lock them out... Yeah, I know there's a pending question. Just hold it. Uh, Dr. Rugo, yeah. is it possible to pay the source of our oil in Kenya shilling? Or what did the you, president mean? You have to convert it. Unless, uh, you see, this, this came against the discussion. Remember, that at that particular point, the, the dominant discussion in town was the de-dollarization discussion, which was being pushed by the BRICS. Uh, the Brazil, the China, the India. But those already formed a block where they're able to do their own inter-county uh, 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 trade. Inter-country. Inter-country. Inter inter-country. Yeah. Inter-country, <laughs> not inter-county. <laughs> inter-country inter -country trade uh, in their own currencies. But for the case of Kenya and the case of oil, at the bottom line, you still have to... Uh, uh, sorry, the other background is that we had just paid a huge... We had just made a huge payout, if I, if I recall, uh, of one of our uh, international debts. And therefore, Forex actually, remember in mid-February, uh, mm -hmm. Forex basically just dipped uh, completely. Mm -hmm. So we needed to recover. So my understanding was that with the credit facility... Uh, so we said we are going to pay it in Kenya shillings. That was the rhetoric then. Mm. But the fact is, we then negotiated a six-month credit. So meaning we are not going to pay that particular point. Mm. But what we're saying is that the base rate, the base currency that you are negotiating, you know, is Kenya shilling. So at one point, you have to convert. So what was the idea then of accumulating Forex? The idea of accumulating Forex is so that by the time you are coming to pay, you have the money. Mm -hmm. It's like me saying, telling you, I owe you 1,000 shillings. Uh, but because I don't have the 1,000 shillings and you don't want it in 100, 100, 100, I tell you, give me 10 months. I'll be putting these 100 somewhere. Mm -hmm. Every month, I'll keep it. Then, then at the end of the 10 months, I'll bring you 1,000 shillings. Uh, because I, right now, I don't have 1,000. Right. But I'm able to, you know, that kind of, that kind of arrangement. Mm -hmm. but, rem but, but then, what the perhaps what, not perhaps, what then seemed not to have been discussed at that particular point is that at the time you come to pay, because you're not going to pay in Kenya shillings, you have mm -hmm. to do some conversion, mm -hmm. it will create a market crisis because then you need to sweep enough dollars. Yes, to pay. To pay. <laughs> so you need to buy them <laughs> with Kenya shillings. And now it is more expensive. <laughs> and, and, and perhaps that explains why mm -hmm. uh, the dollar has just been yeah. doing its thing well, because well, people are speculating and no, you know, uh, a cash out is coming. Mm -hmm. uh, to be able to, to, because we need to pay next month. Right. Uh, I mean, that's a fact mm -hmm. uh, of, 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 the, of the matter. Uh, then the, the other thing I wanted to say is at the same time, currency, including Forex, is not a static thing. We don't store it somewhere and it's doing nothing. You still are continuing to import other goods, other products. Right. The inflation we are talking about, you know, the, the, the non-food kind of uh, inflation, that still has been, you know, uh, uh, you know, going up because it's driven by things we still have to import. Mm -hmm. We still import a fair share uh, of, of products. I was even, it was very interesting actually to learn that even the importation we make from Uganda and Tanzania, we still discuss yeah. it in dollars. In dollars. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, that is interesting. So, yeah. so let's get back to that. Uh, on the matter of the inflation now, right. I think what has happened, normally inflation figures are generated by the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics. And uh, uh, if you look at the uh, standards set by the international body, matter statistics, they are very high standards. So I, 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 I believe the figures are actually coming down mm -hmm. because that figure is always K KNBS figure. Mm -hmm. But that could be attributed to, if, you, if you, you, you've been watching the market uh, some, you must have realized that now uh, the, the prices of uh, food products is, is starting to ease. It's no longer as high as, high, as, high as it used to be. Mm. And if you look at the, the, the kind of the basket of goods they consider to, to, to come of the inflation figure, uh, some, 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 some prices have been coming down, and most of food prices. That's what seems to be easing this figure. But generally, 
it's a figure really I'm not doubting. Mm -hmm. Even though, as you're saying, some other products will be, seem, seem to be going up, but it just means a big jug of the, the things you consider to calculate the figure, then the prices are coming down. And it's now within the range. We know we all say either 5% uh, plus 2.5 or minus, minus yes. which means now we are within the range. And any time inflation behaves well, as it is now, mm -hmm. you also see interest rates will start now also easing, and that is good for the market. But it's interesting, uh, just, just to ne take note of that, I'm just looking at the graph, uh, which I'm sure um, uh, many of us may have seen. Mm -hmm. This is the graph that was presented by the CBK governor uh, when they did the press briefing 12 days ago. And interestingly, that uh, over the period, whereas food inflation, uh, food inflation has come down from a high of 15.8%. Mm -hmm. uh, so in other words, just how, how costs of food was going up from October 2022 mm -hmm. to about 8.6%, which means, you know, food as we know it, and really this is food largely that we, you know, uh, we produce here, you know, right. uh, uh, maize, you know, uh, bananas, uh, uh, cabbages, potatoes and the like. Fuel inflation over the same period has actually moved from 12.6% uh, to 14.5%. Mm -hmm. Now, why is fuel inflation important? Because costs of everyday household mm -hmm. that are driven by fuel are the most painful. Right. Because all this food still has to be transported. The production that we, you know, uh, the, the, the production, uh, whether you're you saying of packaging or whatever, mm. still has to be, you know, uh, it still includes a lot of petroleum uh, products. Uh, edible oils and, the, you know, uh, things like that still have to be transported, have to be imported. And, uh, so because of that fuel, then it means that as much as the inflation overall, mm. you know, which is the cost of goods per basket, has come down, uh, you know, from, from the numbers, the reality of the household because of these fuel-related <laughs> costs still remains very high. Mm. Yeah. So, so, so the net effect is higher? Yeah, the net effect is high. The net effect is high. So number-wise, you still see we have stabilized, mm -hmm. you know? But the reality, and also remember that even as we talk about all these, uh, you know, uh, how inflation is behaving and what it is doing, mm -hmm. the incomes have not changed. Hmm. No, the income of the citizen has not changed, yes. and that's a bigger conversation. So, 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 so that even if you're saying the pain has eased, yeah, the, the, how I deal with it has not changed in terms of the incomes that you know, mm. that, 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 that that citizens have. Uh, but, but yes, uh, with that, uh, the you know the the, the the inflation coming down. I know he's talked about the interest rates. Uh, the the base rate still has been maintained at the same level, uh, which then still means that um, uh, you know access to credit, uh, perhaps. But anyway, that's a discussion we can have. Okay, all right. I want us to talk about something else. And um, I think it was the second week of uh, June, and that Thursday, that the budget was read. I think it was June 15th, if yes. I'm not mistaken. Correct. Around that time. Yeah, and the deficit read out by the Cabinet Secretary for National Treasury was 718 billion, billion yeah. shillings. Yes. Um, 131.5 billion shillings was to come from the external market, and 586.5 was to come from the domestic market. Now, this appears to have changed, and this was uh, made uh, clear by the CBK governor, Dr. Kamal Thuge. Watch. We believe that uh, with uh, that reduced uh, d domestic borrowing, this would uh, reduce the pressure on interest rates, and also uh, we should be, uh, because of the additional external financing, we should be able to uh, have more foreign exchange which uh, will help us build our international reserves. And uh, that build up of inter international reserves also will help us meet uh, external obligations, including the, the upcoming uh, maturity of the, of the Eurobond. And I do have here the letter from the National Treasury, uh, which has confirmed that indeed uh, they will only be borrowing 316 billion and not the much uh, publicized 586 um, uh, billion. All right, that is the CBK governor. And the effect of that is that the external debt rises from 131 to 402 billion shillings, rising from 18% to about 53, 52%. Dr. Makalimulu, what should happen once parliament expresses itself by inducing um, the budget and appropriations, the statement itself, but also this financing of that budget, 
What should happen when, when the policy changes midway? Now, you know normally what would happen is, any time we are doing the budgets, the, the first document which comes to Parliament is a budget policy statement. Mm. And this is a do the document which gives a, what I call the macro environment under which the budget will be prepared. Mm -hmm. So it will indicate how much we are generating locally in terms of tax collections, how much we collect in terms of a provision hate uh, in there, and then how much is to be borrowed. So the, the fiscal uh, framework which was approved by, by Parliament indicated that we were to borrow 718 billion. And that was translated to a budget deficit of about 4.3%. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, as you rightly put it, Sam, mm -hmm. at that point, the division was about 586 domestic, and then the balance, mm -hmm. uh, which is about, one, I think, 142, around that, to, to, to uh, external. But what, also, what was also not being said, and it mm -hmm. was the medium strategy, is that they were also going to borrow an addition, I think, about 500 billion. But that was, the, 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 it's a rolling over. Well, you know where you, you borrow to, to pay your principles and then, because that normally is not captured in the, the books. Yeah. So that's why any time you, you, you're against treasury, they will tell you we are still borrowing 50-50 in terms of percentage. Mm. Because there's that component which they did not capture in the buy, but which is hidden. But that's borrowing. That's what they call redemptions. Yeah, to, to redeem, mm. to redeem the, 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 current, the, the, current, the current loans. So, so when he says they are not going to borrow 360 billion, 360. They are going to borrow 360 and not 586. Mm -hmm. It means there's a difference of about 226 will not be borrowed. 226. Uh, 316. Huh? So it's 270. So it's 270. Oh, it's 270. Yeah. 316. They are borrowing 316. So 270. They are saying they are not borrowed do domestically. Mm. What has not come out clear from the statement is well, as to whether they are borrowed. Is that then being pushed to the external? Because all what we have been pushing always as Parliament mm -hmm. is that we need to go for more uh, uh, concession, concessional loans than not, not the commercial ones. Mm. So, so that uh, if you borrow external, you know, domestic borrowing has the problem of high interest rates and then you end up paying a lot in terms of interest rates. Right. When you go for concessional loans, then they are cheaper and they, are, they have a long repayment period. So, so that this is the, the burden in terms of uh, repayments. But, but that has not come out clear. But what all said and done, since Parliament did approve that, 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 that figure of 718, I don't think as Kenyans we'll have a problem of only reducing that burden because it means they're actually reducing our, the budget deficit. And that is it's always our wish that we reduce the budget but, deficit. But, but, but. What was to be borrowed domestically is now shifting to external. To external. That's, That's what I'm asking. Did it come clear that they are now shifting yes, to external? I'll play you a clip shortly. But, okay. uh, but because that's what they have said, yes. so the 718 deficit remains. Yes. Uh, the borrowing is being transferred to external. Yes. So my question is, yes. should Parliament have a say on whether they agree that indeed let's shift back to the external borrowing, knowing that the president has been very categorical? We are going to do it with foreign borrowing because it's expensive. Really, you know, as a parliament, we did approve the borrowing level of 718 seven, billion. Uh -huh. Now, the way you reorganize the, 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 the loan internally, they may not need to come back to parliament, but I think now the, the parliamentary committee on budget uh, on public debt and privatization, mm -hmm. where I happen to sit as the vice chair, might, they might need now to summon the CS to get the details so that we make sure that we oversight so, that. Are you telling me that you're not aware? <laughs> no, for sure. Me, I'm not aware. I'm not aware. And I, I sit in that committee as the vice chair. I'm telling you, I'm not aware. Because we did approve the 718 billion as a, as a borrowing level. And as the budget committee, any communication from the no. National Treasury? This more likely will be coming to our committee, not the budget committee. So it's something which is possibly we need to summon the CS immediately. Sam, Sam I, think, uh, I think it's important to say that uh, we have not heard anything from the Treasury, from the National Treasury. Yeah. As uh, the only place we got this information is from the CBK. CBK. Uh, Quoting a letter he did not necessarily read in detail, but he confirmed he has a letter uh, indicating, indicating that. Um, and, and this is where we are saying that perhaps it is critical. Uh, in fact, the governor went even further to say that this, and this money is not coming from IMF. Uh, if you go further, if you listen further down, he says it is coming from another source. And this is what we've been saying, that it is becoming extremely uh, 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 concerning that we are getting less and less details about commitments that are mm. being made on behalf of Kenyans. Mm -hmm. The government does not work and operate on its own uh, behest. It operates on the behalf of Kenyans. This is public information. 
and if you think about 270 billion that's the equivalent of another 2 billion uh, 2 million dollars is it 2 million or 2 billion dollars yeah. almost equivalent to the first euro bond that we are going to be redeeming uh, right. this, this 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 year where is this that within so we are, how many uh, we are in how many months into the financial year uh, uh, two months two. two months into the financial year mm. uh, just the other day uh, you say treasury has found a new source of external funds uh, equivalent to 270 billion that's not a small amount um, uh, to, 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 to talk about. So, so these kind of conversations, these kind of commitments that are being made, the, the, the shifts, uh, I mean, of course, external borrowing, and let's, let's just be honest, external borrowing is cheaper. It's cheaper, that's yeah, true. Yeah, it's cheaper in every way. Um, the only thing it does is that in the context we are, right, we are in right now, where, because a lot of this is borrowed in, uh, in, in dollar, it means that then any fluctuation in the dollar you know, uh, as you know, our debt, I think a good portion of our, I mean, a fair portion of our debt has actually just expanded, not because of any borrowing we have done further, but just because of the depreciation of the shilling. So, so that's, that's, that's the main, main danger. Uh, and, and our interest rate, if you look at the last coupon that was, uh, uh, was, was issued, I think last week, or is, is at 17%. Uh, that's quite high, you know, if you think, 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 think about it. Think, think so, so, so the concern right now, from where I sit, is that first, we're still pushing for greater transparency. We need to know what kind of commitments. Mm. Right. Uh, because later, when things now have gone the way they have gone, is when everything now falls back and say, no, Kenyans, now you need to pay. Now, now it's our joint problem, let's share it. I think our government owes us an explanation because when uh, a, a, a vice chair of a committee that is responsible for public debt is not aware uh, that things that they approved have actually been reorganized, at least from a purposes of transparency and opening up. Right. There is already a framework, the, 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 uh, the public debt management office, and there is also a medium term debt strategy, which is what I, I wanted, to, 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 wanted to speak about. It gives the mix. Mm. and how that is organized. Does it mean then that document has been revised? Okay. Should it then come back to parliament because parliament approved it, uh, the medium-term debt strategy, uh, because it tells you this is the current mix that we are going. Benefit of doubt, if then that helps to ease the interest rates and how much competition the government is having uh, in, the, in, in the local market, uh, that would be great. Okay. Uh, Let's listen to some more details uh, because Dr. Makali Mulu here is saying that we need more information. Yeah. This is what the central bank governor said. We have uh, engaged with the national treasury, um, especially just to agree and understand on uh, the external borrowing um, uh, requirements and uh, and this, the sources uh, of that external financing. What I can say is um, um, that financing would be largely from multilateral institutions, uh, both uh, international multilateral institutions as well as regional uh, institutions. So to that extent, um, that funding will be concessional, uh, roughly concessional. Uh, but there's also some uh, that we uh, intend to uh, access or the, or the Treasury intends to uh, access uh, perhaps uh, through, um, uh, it may not be so um, uh, concessional. In several cases, they've already signed the agreements so that this external financing will, um, will start to flow uh, soon. Um, and m maybe I can also tie that with the, with the question on the um, on the eurobond <clears throat> because um, the um, what what we're expecting is a significant inflow uh, between now and uh, and uh, December. Okay, and so that's, that's done. Now, now with that explanation, with that sub, eh? mm. you know, you you, you saw, you, you've seen that the, the governor is saying that they're still consulting with the treasury. So I think from the executive side, it's like they have not really agreed on the position. But as Ruko is saying, Dr. Ruko is saying, we did approve a medium term debt strategy, management strategy, which is a document which is already was tabled in parliament, debated by parliament, and approved. In that document, the approval was the borrowing would be 50-50%. That was the 
preferred uh, arrangement. Mm. So what will happen immediately, this communication is farmed up. Now, as a committee, you are supposed to summon the CS Treasury because the CBK will always summon them, but the best person to summon would always CS Treasury. So they come and explain this, what impact this reorganization will have in terms of their, their approved level of 50-50 mm. and in terms of the final budget deficit. Uh, but you also remember that uh, if you look at the constitution, uh, the, 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 the 223, which, which may provides for kind of revision of the budget by Treasury before coming to Parliament, mm -hmm. is also another avenue which they would normally use. <coughs> that uh, we've not really gone beyond what you approve, we are still reorganizing internally. But there's something you've been pushing, and I, it's good, Sam, we also bring to your attention and the, the viewers that uh, on Monday we had a series uh, workshop where me and Dr. Rugo were in participating, mm -hmm. where we did agree that the public leaders become an issue of concern. And there are things we need to do. We need to think about proper legislation mm. so that we actually get this area properly oversight by parliament and also properly uh, provide for public participation matters, public debt. The other, thing we, the other thing which I think is a best practice and is happening in other countries, and it's something we are thinking as Kenyans and also as members of parliament. In countries like, like uh, Uganda, they would approve the overall borrowing levels, but also on project basis. If you are borrowing more than a billion Kenyan shilling, that must be approved by parliament, in addition to the overall approval. And we are, this is something we've been pushing now in our recommendation that, why don't we have a situation where, in a situation where the government is borrowing more than a billion Kenyan shillings, then that comes to parliament before the borrowing is done. Mm -hmm. So that parliament can now look at the, the proposal, look at the visibility of what is being proposed, look at the viability of the projects being uh, funded, so that the people's representative also have a say. And I think that there has been a bit of resistance on that, but now the legal framework we're thinking of improving will actually, is supposed to capture that also. So, so that that you want has to be approved by parliament, is it the basket of the totality of borrowing or is it specific? No, on, on, on annual basis, uh -huh. we approve the totality. Yeah. So like now we have approved seven, seven, 18 billion yeah. to be borrowed. Yeah. But in a situation where any specific borrowing for a project goes beyond a billion, okay. that we are borrowing for this project which costs more than a billion, mm -hmm. then that also comes to parliament for a second so review. So like, like say, part of the 270 billion, a hundred will come from? Yeah. Multilateral organization, all this World Bank. So, yes, parliament has to have yeah, now it's a second level of approval that we have approved the, the overall figure. Uh -huh. But in a situation where you are getting huge figures for a specific project, like then it's more and then, like, like, like now you see, like uh, the SGR, mm. we it costed less than seven, seven, eighteen billion, which means it could see a borrowed in totality. But we are saying, mm -hmm. even though this law was in place, okay. it means a project like SGR before it, we got the money it should have come to parliament for proper scrutiny and oversight. Uh, all right. That would be the best way out. I, I'm looking at um, what the governor is saying, that some of these agreements have already been signed. Mm. So even if they come to inform you, to what effect? Yeah, that, that's what we are saying. Now, you know, it's like a, a post-mortem. They, they, <laughs> they will come to you, because they are still within the 718, yeah. they are now relying on the overall approval. But we are saying, can we now have even a, like mean approvals? You have the overall, mm. but then even go into further details and look at. And I think we have also been pushing for, and I think this committee is actually, we've already tabled five reports, some on this, this matter of public data in parliament. Right. The thing we are pushing for is now, we need the, 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 the public data register to be made public, so that even you, from where you sit, with all the details. Now, many sources have said they don't know who the public debt is. Yeah, that's the thing, yeah, even the outer general. You know, this, these are the kind of things we are saying, this public debt issue, uh, it, it, we must thank parliament now that we have a committee which is still looking at this. And uh, I think uh, we have our cut, our job well cut, mm. so that uh, these are the issue, we, issues we need to push, so that within a, a few years, public debt will be as open as every other part of this country. Mm. Okay, uh, Dr. Rugo, yeah. so if you look at currently, well, this may be outdated slightly because these are, this is data from April, but it means the latest that we have. Um, external debt contributed 52.9, so call it 53%. Mm. Uh, but um, what is this? For domestic debt, it was 47%. Mm. Yes. So if you alter the structure of borrowing for this financial year, it obviously alters yeah. also. It, it alters that, mm. and it may, it may actually move it further up. Please, exactly. uh, an important thing to note is that uh, the external debt 
part of it also just is because of the uh, depreciation of the Kenya shilling. Right. So even if you're doing nothing, you see the Kenya shilling does not change against itself. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but for the dollar, and that's because it was it was playing actually at around fifty. 2.9 and 49.1 yeah. uh, at the beginning of the year. Yeah. So that, but the second thing is that once, if you borrow this 270 billion extra mm. uh, from the external market, remember that is equivalent net present value. It's equivalent to what you need. You're borrowing right now. Mm. If the dollar goes further down, then basically it means that you you will end up not necessarily borrowing 270 billion Kenya shillings, but perhaps more, more. Uh, when, 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 when you convert. The thing is that at this particular time, and this is the push, is that you need a debt, a debt portfolio that first of all allows you breathing space. Mm -hmm. Because if you're going to still continue paying the equivalents that we have, then you start having struggling, you, you, as you're struggling, you start struggling with provision of public services. You know, the discussion last week at the devolution conference, for instance, um, uh, was that the, there seems to be almost like a locked space within which you can get more resources even going to uh, uh, to services that are being provided by the county, uh, by the county governments as part of the devolution system. Mm -hmm. And a big part from our analysis of the International Budget Partnership is that a big portion of that is because you have so many locked costs, especially debt repayment, you know, uh, and I think we, we don't have to rehash the numbers here, mm -hmm. but basically you have almost 65 out of every 100 shillings you're collecting going to debt repayment. Mm -hmm. And that has nothing to do, it's not a negotiable figure. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's, it's a must. What that does is that then it starts squeezes out, squeezing out resources to critical services, which then, uh, pushes citizens to have to pay for them out of pocket. Education, healthcare, you know, and agricultural services, you know, uh, top, 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 especially education and health, mm. uh, if you think. Uh, so, so, so for me, it's really whatever debt mix we go, there's still a big question around the debt transparency part of it. Uh, as, as I've said, really, we need more information about what the kind of agreements are being entered into. Um, and um, um, uh, I mean that's that's a, but there's also an accountability question, uh, which 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 is, which is then what we are having to deal with okay. of how are we spending this money uh, for what for what for what purposes? But basically, that's that's for me the the main goal. I don't think I will be I'm, I'm I'm worried so much about whether we are borrowing locally or we are borrowing externally. So long as the mix allows you space to be able to advance the country uh, in terms of your <coughs> daily obligations, and two, you put the resources for the purposes for which you borrowed. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But, but Dr. Makali, when the president and the government have been keen on saying that uh, we have to cut out that foreign debt and focus on borrowing locally, and he says that um, the rate last week was 17%, is it realistic? But also, I mean, how do you balance between politics of speaking what is popular versus reality of the market? <laughs> you know, many times I've used this statement that uh, we, we, we are seeing a lot of double speak from, uh, from the current government. To me, if I were them, if I were part of that government, I would be advising that uh, the Kenyans you are dealing with today are very diligent Kenyans, and, and they understand. I would be advocating for a situation where we say, why don't you just explain to Kenyans the reality mm. on the ground mm. and ask them to allow time mm. for you to manage within that kind of environment? Because what is happening, a lot of promises were, 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 were you know, during the campaign, we didn't give a lot of promises to all Kenyans. Mm -hmm. And I think what is now happening is, is that balancing between the, what you promised and what is happening in, uh, in real time. Because even as you can see, these levels of borrowing are not very different from what you believe we used to borrow. If you remember the last budget, mm -hmm. the borrowing was eight, eight what, eight thirty something? Yes. Eight thirty something yes. billion. Now we have come down to 718. Mm. And I can tell you by the time we hit June next year, not be surprised to see it even going beyond the eight that something. So, so to me, as we are saying, we are not borrowing, but in reality, those of us who, are, who understand what is happening, borrowing is taking place every day, and, and that's why we are proving uh, uh, this deficit. And I've said it many times, any time you have a budget deficit, you have no choice. You have only about three areas. One is you, you raise taxes, and if you touch that one, Kenyans will be up. The other one is you borrow, 
Oh, the third one, which is now we can think of, is the privatization where you sell most of this government, government the Varasatos to, to capture, to meet the whatever gaps you have. But normally the two uh, principles... That only fixes the current financial year. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying, principally, the, the old two elements, raise taxes or borrow. But there's, a, there's an initial one, uh, if I was to come up with that. Uh, yes. You know, the initial one is, I don't know why we are increasingly not discussing the expenditure side of it. Yeah, the expenditure side of the, the, the thing. I mean, last year, um, when the budget policy statement was tabled in 2002, in, February, in March, in February, the committee, I don't know whether erroneously, uh, I think you are still there. Which year again? Uh, last year, uh, 22, for, the, for this current... <laughs> For this current financial, the current financial. Year. <laughs> Sorry, uh, 2002 <laughs> is when I first voted. Uh, 2022, 2023. Last year, so yeah. work with the last year. Mm -hmm. uh, forget about the numbers. It was the first time the budget committee, which I came to learn later, almost almost erroneously, mm -hmm. had made a decision that they are not going to allow a deficit that is beyond what we can handle. And they had cut it to 400 billion. Basically, they had said, this deficit, cut it to 400 billion. What that was going to do is that it was going to reduce the deficit by half mm -hmm. of that financial year. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't rein in deficit, you see, deficit has become, the number on the deficit has yes. become almost a balancing figure. Yeah. You know? So that you just budget for anything, then you say, this deficit we will borrow. Right. You know? Yet, the reality is, um, and then even as you go into the financial year, and we have quite some numbers that we have analyzed, you realize the budget, the many years, save for last year, last year was the first year, uh, you know, uh, that we had the deficit coming down uh, from the initial figure. Right. The other years, it went, the years it went up as, by, by as much as 99%. Mm -hmm. So if we are not going to rein in the expenditure side of things, there's that, that story that is on, um, uh, I think it's on page, uh, the story that is on page 12. This idea about parastatals, government hanging on parastatals mm. that are non-functional, those parastatals occupy about 18, I mean, 20, about 28% of our budget mm -hmm. is spent by different <coughs> forms of parastatals. Mm -hmm. The expenditure side is what is the trouble. Mm. I don't think this is a revenue problem. The government, can, uh, the, 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 the government seems to suggest that all we need is more money and we will deliver on everything. No, remember, even the president, when he came in, the first thing he committed is we'll cut the, def we'll cut the deficit by 300 billion. Right. Yeah? You say, yes, cut the budget. Basically, what you're doing is cutting the deficit. Mm. Because if you don't deal with the deficit, it does not matter what arrangements you come up with for borrowing. Yeah, and it's, the options then are just what he has said. Mm. You either tax more, there's a limit. You either borrow more, there's a limit. Or you privatize, basically you let off certain assets, right. you know, um, and, 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 and why we are not engaging on what can we cut and still be able, all these private, you know, parastatals, can we privatize them completely and get our hands off? You know, why should government continue to hold on to them, yet they are not necessarily bringing in uh, uh, any. So for me, I think the expenditure discussion has to be held. But, but, but once you even privatize those institutions that are not uh, generating revenue or sufficient revenue, and that fixes the, that current financial year, so subsequently you'd expect that they start now generating revenue for the country. Yes, and if they don't perform, you wind them up. You wind them up. I mean, there are no two ways. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's how private sector operates. All right. If the business does not make economic sense, yeah. you, 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 you wind it up. You know, you dissolve it. Uh, but you see, well, as long as it is a government institution, whether it's delivering or not, you still have to pay salaries. Yes. You still have to pay, Spend you know, uh, you have to, 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 to incur running costs. Um, they still need, to of, they need offices. They need to travel to do the work. You right. know, um, uh, so, so, but when you move them away, then it means that they either, you know, it's basically they survive, uh, or um, they are wound up here. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at the feedback that Kenyans have sent to us this morning on Debrek. The hashtag to use is Debrek, and uh, this is what they are saying. This is Honorable Lillian Sioi. Let's remember that the subsidies will be paid from the taxes we pay. Let's pay the rising prices at the pump to eliminate the bureaucratic problems we saw associated with subsidies. That's an interesting comment. Mm. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. What, what, do you th what do you think, Dr. Makali, that, that we avoid, she's actually calling it subsidies, well, the president said it's stabilization fund. Yeah. 
and uh, went on against the paper that wrote that. Uh, but what do you think? We do it with all this stabilization, let people pay whatever they have to pay? No, some of these are just uh, stabilization, some of these, those are, those are semantics. We are just government. So, but, but if they are serious on uh, this thing, remove subsidies as Kenyans pay what the market determines. Uh, market for, let's, let's allow the free market to, to be at play. But if you are going to use the petroleum development levy to finance this stabilization fund, mm. why not scrap the petroleum development levy? Don't collect it in the first place. You, you know, you remember at one point there was a serious debate on why food prices are high. Mm. And we, actually, the finance committee then listed about, I think, 18 different levies being, uh, I think, was it 8 or 18, yeah. either that. Yeah. And some, some were very good candidates for uh, abolition. Mm. We said, why don't we abolish them? But you know what, what is like now with that one? I think other than just a part of stabilizing fuel prices, it, it, it's also good that the, the element of exploring where, where we can get petroleum products, all that is important for us. So, but I think what we are saying is application. So that, as, as uh, Dr. Rugo was saying, let's make sure that if we collect any levy intended for specific purpose, mm. we apply it for the same purpose. Let's not use that levy for other things. Because if we go that, then we'll, we'll be growing the, the economy and they do, that is good for the country. But I, I like what that, that viewer is saying. To uh, Baban Alietu, you know, she let's just allow. sits in parliament with you. <laughs> <laughs> that was just a development. Who is that? <laughs> Lillian Sioy. <laughs> okay. Look at get um, another comment here um, that is coming from our viewers. We're done with this. Can I just go to the next one? Babu Michael. I find it very interesting when personal political interests seem to be mixed up with issues of national interest and those affecting Kenyans directly. Is it really necessary to talk about a negative dialogue's outcome? At this time, that is an earlier conversation. Remy Butia, turning the economy around and reducing poverty faster requires strategic investment in sectors delivering the most development dividends. Mm. To achieve this, governance and stability That's true. is key. Sir Nixon Dugire, Kenya was to introduce BRT system. What would happen economically if the government go, to, uh, go the German way? Where Germany introduced discounted flat rate travel pass and so increased Readership on public tran transit. Okay. Brian Chamoa, you can note them down, you can reflect on them. Yeah. Uh, Brian Chamoa is saying that I believe we can improve our economy by maintaining <coughs> steady growth, managing inflation, minimizing fluctuations, fostering a stable political environment, and encouraging responsible financial practices among businesses and individuals. Then Ibrahim Bakari, the moment this administration will put a cap on corruption and other wastages in public institutions, that will be the beginning of our economic recovery. Can you put a cap on um, <laughs> corruption? It sounds like an expenditure <laughs> point uh, for you to suggest that. Uh, okay, let's go to the next one. This is um, Engineer Lazaro. Economy will grow only when leaders stop balkanizing the nation along tribal lines with their negative utterances, ganging up Kenyans along tribal Chiefdoms for individuals, political gain would continue to add injuries to the fragile economy. So Kenyans, um, having a say this morning, Dr. Rugo, what, what do you think about those views? But also, last week, the president spoke quite heavily against uh, corruption and saying that people are going to be dealt with, that nothing is going to be tolerated. It's not the first that we're hearing coming from a head of state. Um, this has been on. Uh, as long as the history of the country has existed. Mm. But how important is that conversation at a time that you're talking about cutting expenditure, reducing the deficit, taking care of what is happening in the forex market, inflation, and everything? Yeah, um, so, so let, me, let me first of all, uh, just, just going, the, the central discussion right now must be about how to create incomes. I think we've, we've dealt so far too long mm -hmm. on the cost of doing government, and I'll come to that in a minute. We, we, we seem to suggest that once government is functional, has many departments and institutions, then things are okay. But what, what, what drives an economy is not government spending. What drives an economy is individuals and citizens in that population having an income, because uh, money in private hands gets better used than when it is in government hands. And that, that, that has, been, has been tested in the case of uh, if you got government, for instance, to buy a basket of food and deliver to households versus giving them an equivalent amount of money to those households, it has been tested that they actually applied that, the money mm. much better. Right. You know? uh, and even it was more cost efficient in that, in that sense. So, so, so because 
government cannot create, cannot give, cannot give a handout to every citizen. So, so, so for me, I think that that's critical. And, and that means that we cannot, have a, uh, we cannot have two stances where we are not clear whether we are going for, we are leaning more towards importation or we are leaning more towards local production. We have every capacity to produce all the food we need and have a surplus. Why we don't invest in that still baffles me mm -hmm. to this day. Uh, we can produce all the food we need mm -hmm. and even feed. The people we import food from have the same climatic conditions like us, Tanzania and Uganda, for instance. Uh, if, if we, you know, uh, and even if you are to go to the Israels and the Ukraines of this world, uh, they don't have any. So, so for me, and you see what that does is that when you invest in a space like agriculture and manufacturing, mm -hmm. food is available, and then you, have a, you build a supply chain and, and a production that creates opportunity. Let me come to the question around corruption. Uh, and, and therefore, all these other things, transport system, banking system, comes to facilitate that kind of an economic agenda. Mm -hmm. Because you can, these are the support, you know, a, a support, a support systems. Coming to matters corruption, I think we seem to have a de facto you know, state, corrupt state, where people, perhaps we've accepted that corruption is the way to do. I've even heard people say, why don't you then legislate? You know, how much people then should give us kickbacks? And what is a cut for, for, for kind, of, kind, of, kind of business? For me, the, I was at a meeting at the conference when the president spoke very strongly uh, uh, on matters, on matters uh, and anti, you know, uh, dealing with corruption. Mm -hmm. I think what you need is action. It's action. Because all the conservative numbers you work around seem to suggest that you lose as much as our current deficit. Mm. 700 billion, you know, in, the, in that range, when you look at the different numbers, whether is what the president anecdotally announced one time, uh, the former president, or whether it's what the attorney general, uh, sorry, mm -hmm. uh, the auditor general says cannot be accounted for. Right. Uh, um, you know, whether it's about the story around the first euro bond and the like. Uh, but secondly, is that that has to apply across board so it's not just, uh, you know, that uh, it's county guys or it's national, it has to apply. And we have laws. We have laws on theft. You know, why we decided to create another category of economic crimes that are treated more specially, you know, and with gloves. Mm. Uh, <laughs> you know, because if action is not taken, we continue to lose so much money. Right. We continue to have runaway corruption because, you know, this utadu kind of uh, behavior, Actually. you know, so you know. So what will you do? Uh, for me, I think that's where, uh, that's my biggest, uh, uh, my biggest, my biggest, maybe. We have to see so action. I think that corruption should actually just be called theft and dealt with. No, no, it is theft. Not that it should. It is theft. You, I mean, you walk out here and drive away with somebody's, one of your neighbor's cars here. You are, you are a thief. <laughs> Why is it then that if you drive off with money for uh, malaria kits, uh, or if you drive off with money for roads uh, or for any other infrastructure, uh, you know, uh, project or whatever, you know, for books and what have you, we say, no, 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 that's an economic crime and therefore you need now to be investigated uh, 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 especially. It does not happen like that. And even in the private sector, it does not happen like that. Right. I think for me, it's call it for what it is, apply the rule of law mm. and thoroughly so. Because if we don't deal with this, we will continue to have a lot of spillage. Uh, of, 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 of resources, where then you, you have less and less public trust, and then people then spend all their time looking for how then will I make money? Mm. How will I, you know, uh, you, and you have a generation now that starts thinking, okay, fine, you actually don't need to work hard. You know, working hard is for fools and idiots. You know, you just need to fix smart deals, uh, cut your corners, uh, so long as you're not caught. By the way, there's a research that was done, and many were saying, I don't mind being corrupt as long as I'm not caught. <laughs> <laughs> this was a study of, uh, to be shockingly, um, between 19-year-olds and 25-year-olds. 25-year-olds. <laughs> you know, you make a very interesting point there that um, working hard is for idiots. For idiots. <laughs> what are we doing here? Um, let's listen to the president. He said something about uh, uh, fixing that question of imports and uh, local production. Watch. Sasa ni waulize, kama mtu wataki kitanda imetengenezwa na vijana wa Kenya, 
ati mpaka aende anunue ile ya kutoka China ndio apate usingizi akose usingizi alale chini so uh, dr makali mulu the yes. president is speaking as if um, and he has repeated this you would, it would appear like imported furniture are now banned but the finance act was raising excess tax to 30% on imported furniture yeah, 30% why is it necessary to continue with this conversation in the public space once already what appears like a punitive tax has been imposed? And what does it do to, to a market? No, I, I think w what is happening, you know, is just talking the language of the Mwananji. You know, when Mwananji hears that, they are very excited and all that. But as you, are, you rightly put it, the Finance Act is already now a law. We are, they are, we are going to charge 30% for any imported uh, furniture material. And on the basis of that, we have already discouraged people from, uh, because it means you want to buy, you can still buy, mm -hmm. but it will be more expensive than it is today. Uh, but generally, what, what is up is just telling one age what they should be able to hear. And uh, you can see they are getting very excited that come at a utapata, utalala to. I <laughs> mm. so, 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 uh, but I think what is important is this. And I think this, this point is tied to what Dr. Ruko was saying. You know, when you look at this economy, it's so dependent on imported goods, both inputs and also final goods. And in an economy where you, you rely so much on imported goods, automatically, some of the challenges we are facing, we will face them. Mm. For example, the issues of the foreign exchange, because all these importations are being done in, uh, in, in, in foreign currencies. So, so, so if you really want to help this country, mm -hmm. and uh, like he's saying, he's saying, can we promote our local industries, which is very good. But we wouldn't want, the, we must also co bring, uh, discuss the issue of uh, cost of production, because you know, basic uh, principles of production demands that you, you minimize your cost and improve your profits. But in, in a situation where you, you, you tend to buy a local bed, but if you are to get the same quality of the bed from coming from China, it is, is four, five times the production cost what is coming up in China, then you, you are not making things better for the Mwanaiji. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, Mwanaiji is the one to buy. So it, this is a situation where the, most of the local products are so expensive that then we don't, we don't uh, get, get gain from the, the, the benefits of competitive, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know there's the competitive edge where you say competitively I'm better place to produce this as compared to you. So the issue of the competitive uh, advantage based on production, we must also bear in mind because there are things you can do better. There are things you must accept that can, they can be done by, better by other people in terms of cost of production and the pricing. So in a situation where you push for local production, but then you, prices are higher than what you would get from outside, you're also getting it wrong uh, from where we sit as economists. Okay. Because at the end of the day, we need Kenyans to get cheaper, cheaper products. But just my comment on what uh, the, the viewers have said, uh, Sam, confirms what I was saying earlier. If you look at those comments, they're just telling you that Kenyans are very aware, they're diligent, they know what is happening. So you can't take them for granted. It's time we tell the Kenyans what they should be told. Not what, not what, they, 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 what is the best word. We need to tell Kenyans what they should be told, not what they expect to be told, you know? Okay. The thing is, we tell them the reality, that this is the situation. And I'm sure if anybody pleaded with the Kenyans to allow them more times, based on uh, the, the reality on the ground, Kenyans are, uh, will agree, and then we, we move together other than statements which from platforms, which are just not giving them, giving them hope. But re in reality, there is no hope. Dr. Rugo, is there a limit? Because even if you start introducing taxes continuously to discourage importation so that you promote, hoping that you promote local production and uh, consumption, is there a limit of how far you can go? Because yeah. just too much of taxes on these imports. Yeah, I think there's, there's, there's a limit. There is a limit because no economy can produce everything it requires. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, even the Germans who produce cars still uh, buy Toyotas and Hondas that are produced elsewhere uh, and import fruits uh, uh, from Ecuador and other countries. Mm -hmm. So no economy can produce everything it requires. And therefore, the idea around um, uh, 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 taxation is one, 
to first of all be able to promote. Actually, as, as, as opposed to what sometimes you see, taxation is not supposed to just generate income money. It's not, a, it's a, it's not a, an income generation activity by government. Taxation is a facilitation mm -hmm. activity. Because basically what it does is that then government collects taxes and produces goods and services that you cannot produce for yourself. Yes. So that then you are able to produce other goods that can be consumed. So it produces, for instance, it gives you a service called health. You cannot provide for yourself health care because then it would mean that you have to employ uh, the entire battery of, of doctors and nurses mm -hmm. and uh, specialists yeah. you know, to attend to you alone. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, and then when it comes to importation, Taxation there, it plays a dual role. One, it's supposed to allow a country to get what it does not produce at a rate that is reasonable, but also protect what it produces from, the comp from unfair competition, as it were, from the outsider, yeah. you know, uh, in that sense. But let's remember that Kenya is also a, a signatory to a certain, to certain number of agreements. Uh, trade agreements. Um, we are in a liberal economy, as as as, as it were, where you need to be, you, you should be able to buy. So there is a limit. There is a limit, and therefore it should not just be punitive mm. towards uh, you know. So for instance, when you make it very expensive to buy cell phones, and you barely produce any cell phone in Kenya, there you are not then promoting. You to promote. <laughs> You're not promoting anything else, mm. you know, in that sense. But if you are very punitive in terms of saying, for instance, uh, uh, tax on beans and maize, which you can produce here, then you are saying that, yes, we should be able. But when you do that, remember the reciprocity principle, that other countries also have a right to do the same thing you have done. <laughs> You know, and say, okay, even as for goods coming from Kenya, we are also going to make it impossible for them to get into our into our market. So yes, there's a limit uh, because it has to be a balancing out. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. I think we have to leave it at, um, at that, and um, the conversation continues. Uh, really, in the challenges that uh, Kenyans face in this economy, uh, I'm just wondering, one year later since the election, are we better, worse, or the same as we were? <laughs> Uh, I take that to be the final word. Uh, I take the key to, to Are we better uh, or worse or the same way we are? Uh, Income-wise, I think we are between uh, the same we are and worse because more and more Kenyans have lost incomes. And that perhaps that had nothing to do with the Kenya Kwanzaa government. It also had to do just with the effects of COVID and everything uh, that has happened. But the direction we are going in terms of our cost of doing business, our business environment is becoming more and more tough. Mm. Yeah, it's becoming more expensive to do business here in Kenya. And I'm sure you've brought lawyers here who have told you more and more companies are asking, where else can we set up? Mm. You know, uh, where else can we set up? Because the, this place, we are happy to sell our goods here, but producing here, uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, so it's becoming more and more expensive. That then indicates for you almost a negative direction okay. uh, 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 in, 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 in that sense. Uh, in terms of uh, our politics, I feel our politics is still same old, same old. Uh, you know, we're shouting at the top of the roof. Uh, my challenge to, and I say this in a forum we were with him, my challenge to parliamentarians and senators is we've given you a space where you can discuss these things and make decisions on our behalf. We should not all look powerless. That's true. <laughs> you know, we should, okay. we should not all come out here. You right. know, uh, and uh, so, 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 and that's why, uh, for instance, and, and finally for me, I think a continuous working together is the solution. Uh, right. That's why Dr. Muller has said, we are working very closely even with their committee uh, just to unpack these things around debt uh, and continuing to, to engage with the various, but from the side of government, our ask is give us information. All right. Dr. Mulu, better, worse, or same place, just older? <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree with, uh, with what Dr. Rugo is saying. Uh, we are negative direction. That's a fact. That's a, a very it can be confirmed with that. Mm. But, but that, that does not mean that things cannot improve. All right. I think what we need to do as Kenyans is to appreciate the reality that a number of things need to change the way we are conducting our business. And if we accept that, and uh, keep the politics aside, uh, this economy is very resilient. It's I can true. tell you for sure, Kenyan economy is very resilient. And given time, given the right environment in terms of political environment, uh, economic environment, this economy can really go far. So I'm saying we are hopeful that uh, we, we, can, we can change the direction from negative to positive very 
quickly. And uh, I, I'm happy about what is happening now with the, the rains, you know. God was very gracious to us. Mm. Uh, most areas are going to get bamba harvest. Okay. Uh, but I, I still insist, let's not continue relying on God's grace. <laughs> let's come up with the programs and means. projects which can turn around the issues. Yeah. We have talked about irrigated agriculture for many, many years. That is the right direction we want to feed our people. Otherwise, we'll continue lamenting. <laughs> The Book of Lamentations. All right. Um, Asante Sana, Dr. Makali Mulu from Kitui Central, but also a member of the Budget Committee and the chairperson on the committee that is on public debt. Um, wish you well in your work. Uh, Vice Chair, sorry. Yes. And also Dr. Abraham Rugo from IBP Kenya. Thank you for making time for us. Now we had invited Kure Kimani, who is the chairperson of the Finance Committee at the National Assembly. Unfortunately, he's not able to join us this morning. Um, we had hoped that he would give uh, the contribution from the side of parliament and especially the wing of the majority party. But uh, that's our time. My name is Sam Gituku. See you again some other time. Bye for now.